Aora. A world where mortals live, die, and are reborn through the turning of the wheel. The cycle of reincarnation watched over by the gods, and made possible through pillars of a mystical substance known as Audra. Five years ago, you traveled from your home to the Deerwood, a nation that had waged war against the incarnated god of light, Aethys, resulting in his destruction. The country suffered from a plague of Hollowborn, infants born without souls, that many believed was punishment for killing a god. In an ancient, secluded ruin, you witnessed a secret ritual that inadvertently transformed you into a Watcher. One who can see and speak with souls. The ritual also gave you horrible visions. Waking nightmares of a past life that threatened your sanity. To put them to rest, you pursued the man who had led the ritual. A seemingly immortal agent of the gods known as Theos Ix Arcanon. With divine assistance, you confronted and defeated Theos, ending your visions and resolving the Hollowborn Crisis. In so doing, you also learned the great secret that Theos had protected. That the ancient Empire of Anguith had transformed themselves into gods. Your visions finally put to rest, you retired to the castle of Cad Nua, built atop a massive statue of pure Audra, where you ruled in relative peace and prosperity. Made a nice story. You fixing up that old keep? Lifting the curse? <laughs> Must have told it a hundred times. But something got to nod at me. Thinking the spirits there weren't really at rest. But maybe the gods weren't finished with us. God came back. You forgive us. Last the trouble dreams. Sooner or later, we all have to wake up. So you wake to a sleepless world, the in-between of life and death. Follow your memories. You have been here before. You have seen past the Shroud. You are a Watcher now, and a Watcher you will stay. A Watcher sees souls, knows their pasts, and the souls see them back. A dubious honor, inheriting a fortress both broken and cursed. What is a god? Hmm? A higher power? A rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked? The gods aren't real, but something else entirely. Something created by people.
And did you ever consider that these were things you were never meant to understand? That their comprehension is beyond you? Let the world see. Let them decide what to do. The wheel has turned again, Watcher. Come. An aged dwarf shares this strange floating platform with you. His face is creased by so many wrinkles that his features lie buried amid shadowy pockets of skin. Still, the dwarf's well-practiced habits have left telltale tracks of a welcoming rictus across his visage. You can see his smile coming before it blooms, reshaping the dwarf's face from a hanging sack of flesh into something resembling an oddly carved Mary Gore replete with unhealthy bumps and discolored splotches. Sit, please. Thank you for joining us, Watcher of Cadnua. The gaunt woman seated at the table is clad in time-worn black armor that seems too massive for her to move in. A pale, slender neck rises from the gorget, topped by a hollow face. The milky skin stretched across it is delicate and translucent, like parchment that has been scraped clean too many times. She is preoccupied with the arrangement of cards on the table between you. With each movement, her armor squeaks and groans as though bearing an incredible weight. She places a final card, gives a nod of satisfaction, and raises her eyes to meet yours. Your brush with the Divine has drained you of your powers, fractured your memories. Look upon these cards. They represent the courses of your life. You alone know best how they flowed. Arrange them to fit what you remember. Does everything appear to be in order? Good. Welcome to the beyond. I am Bera. One half anyway. She points a finger in the direction of the dwarf who led you here. Though the movement is slight, her gauntlet squeaks like a rusty hinge. The dwarf's rictus returns as he nods in the woman's direction. The gods offered you boons in exchange for resolving the Hollowborn crisis. You did not accept any of their offers. What did you do with the souls? Tell me, do you remember when we last met? You came to that tower seeking our aid. You prayed for help in reaching Theos, beyond the Court of Penitence, but would not pledge yourself to me. Still, a pledge unmade stands fairer in this court than a pledge broken. She places a card in the middle of the arrangement. A bell tower with no bell. Her fingertips slowly drag away from the card, faintly creaking as they retreat across the table. You had need of the gods once before. Now it seems we have need of you. The being that occupied Odnua's statue beneath your castle was the dead god, Aeothus. Of this, we are certain. What we do not know is what his intentions are. Though Aeothus stole a large fragment of your soul, you were strong enough to survive the onslaught and enter the in-between. You and he are still connected. He has chosen a body made of living Audra, perfused with the power of thousands of souls, including yours. It should be little difficulty for an experienced Watcher to find him. Taking a physical form in Aora is fraught with peril. 
Most mortal minds and bodies are incapable of containing divine power. It can lead to problems, as Aethys learned not long ago. Her armored hand gingerly places a card sideways on the table. It features a man with a burst of light instead of a head. I know. It is my business to know. 322 in Cadnoa and your surrounding lands. Their souls remain in Aetha still. You have the power to save them. Serve me and I will return you to your body. Or don't, and return to the wheel. Good. Before you return to Aora as my herald, you must remember who you were, the last whisper of life in death. For a moment, the sockets of her eyes darken, leaving the pits of a death's head gazing out at you. When you can picture your own face, the beyond will lead you back to your own kind, to the world of mortals.
Let's go. You're mine! Stand together! Somehow it always ends in bloodshed. <laughs> Watch and learn, Vax. I'm always willing. Let's put an end to this. Another for the Queen. This one's for Keyleth. Once more into the breach. Your kneecaps are so dead! Go forth now, Watcher, as my herald. Know that I do not give you this title lightly. When the time comes, you will have the power to reveal the souls that cling to you. To open the gateway from the in-between to the waking world. Find Aethys. Learn his plans. When I have cause to talk to you, I will summon you. With a quick gesture of her hand, you feel a sharp pain in what would be your chest. The pain continues, intruding deeper into your soul. Looking down, you see a small lump of darkness roiling within you. The darkness lingers there, but the pain abates and fades entirely within the span of a few seconds. A chime. Do not fear, Harold. It will not harm you unless you choose to cross me. I trust it will not come to that. Her gauntleted hand gestures to the dwarf, hovering nearby. The dwarf nods, contorts his face with his odd smile, and gestures to a new door. The return to your body feels like waking after a fitful drunken sleep. The rocking of the ship sends pain jolting through your limbs. Crashing waves hammer inside your skull. Adair watches over your body with a glazed look, taking long, even tokes from his pipe. At the first movement of your chest, he starts. His gasp, mid-puff, sends him coughing and straining for breath. No, there's no way. You're awake. What are you doing awake? How are you feeling? Me? You don't remember? Adair points at his face, which he seems to be arranging into his most recognizable expression. Receiving no response, he shrugs. I'm the captain of this boat. And I was real big back in Deerwood. Had this keep called Cadnua. I was famous. And I was what you'd call a watcher. I'd go around talking to dead folks and creeping out just about everyone who saw. He holds up his hands with fingers curled to mimic claws. You, you're just some farmer. Likes to follow me around. Take most of the beating for me when we get attacked. Don't worry, it'll all come back. Ah, see? You remember. 
Anyway, you didn't answer my question. How you feeling? Alive's a big improvement. I hate to cast a pall over your recovery, but I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. The voice echoes from inside the bust. The remains of the steward of Cad Nua. Cad Nua has been destroyed. Aethus possessed the statue of Maros Nua and rose from the ground, consuming the souls of all nearby. It is only by the exceptional strength of your soul that you survived. And even then, just barely. The further Aethus withdrew, the weaker you became. We chartered this ship and followed him to the Deadfire Archipelago. I know not how, but it seems he has retained a piece of your soul. And proximity to it has brought you back. Misfortune's brewing topside, we... Magrans fires the captain stirs. An older man with ale-sour breath rubs his bloodshot eyes and stares at you. Engrim, the smell of drink on your breath could wake the very dead. Now what's this about? Pirates. They're demanding parley with you, Captain. I know this is asking a lot, but you better arm yourself and get on deck. Should be some gear in there. He it. There's gear in that wardrobe. Take what you need. There are weapons in the armoire here. All right. Now make some use of it. The pirates of Deadfire are notorious. I suggest you deal with them quickly. Sloop, lost and alone in the storm. I'll be taking your ship now, if you don't mind. And especially if you do. Well, at least he asked. I am a gentleman of fortune. Give her up easy, and I'll see you get a swift death. It'll be bloody. An agonizing sure. Well, at least it'd be quick. And then he's going to wear his breeches on his head and dance for us? Did I hear that right? Aye. But the breeches are gonna be stitched from your skin. You got a smart mouth on ya. Careful. That'll get you killed faster than any blade. Listen up, mates. I'm off to spear me a bigger fish. One with sharper teeth like. I'm trusting you lot not to cock this up. Don't damage the sloop when you take it. Play with the crew if you'd like, but don't bring me any prisoners. None that are alive. You heard, Benwith! After... Defend the 
ship! You've been getting a lot of sleep so far on this trip. I'd have woke you, but you look so peaceful with your face in the sand. If you're worried about the ship, you can stop worrying. It's wrecked right over there. So far, it's just you and me and the chair lady over there. It's a relief to see you awake, my lord. I worried you were in for another long sleep. Don't know, but it's real pretty. Difficult to say for certain. The dead fire is spotted with islands, some quite small. The good news is that if the storm hasn't spun us round entirely, I'd say we're in charted waters. I believe the Valian Trading Company operates in the region. Hence that little visit from that wretched pirate captain. I'm afraid I won't be much assistance in that regard. And not to doubt Master Adair's capacity, but even he would need supplies. That's true. Steak, especially. Patching the hull is only the start. You're going to need help getting the Defiant out to sea again. And a crew, for that matter. Let's see about the other survivors. And somehow we gotta get the ship repaired. I don't want to be paddling out of here on a salvage raft. For now, I'd say your best bet is to find some sign of civilization. If nothing else, we may be able to hire on a shipwright. My lord, if it is not too taxing, could you explain how it came to pass that you were returned to us? These gods. You make one deal with them to stop a madman, and the next thing you know, they're threatening your soul. 
That isn't much of a choice. But castle or no castle, you are still my lord, and I will aid you to the best of my ability. Well, I suppose we'd better get a move on.